there is enjoy namen i am back uh i i am going to introduce uh, vanna madam although everybody knows her it's a tough job uh, to say that we will be introducing her but uh, since we have a huge uh, uh, viewership at this moment so for those who would not know her uh, it is to say she is uh, presently serving as the senior economic advisor in the ministry of civil aviation she is the divisional head for economic regulations air cargo the indian and global economic and competition issues tax and gst matters aviation financing aircraft leasing aircraft manufacturing and mro developing aviation passenger and cargo hubs in india and data ecosystem development she has served in various ministries and departments of the government of india uh, gaining on the job knowledge and experience of economic administration particularly infrastructure development with public and or private uh, participation trade policies industrial policies fiscal policies foreign investment external debt and capital markets and center state financial relations she also has experience of handling internal and external security law and order disaster and crisis management political judicial and external affairs atomic energy and space sectors she has been a trade negotiator for india on the day on the doha development agenda of the wto for about 12 years and has also held responsibility for settlement of intergovernmental disputes under international trade laws ladies and gentlemen it is my honor to request uh, ms vanna agarwal to kindly say a few words and uh, madam over to you thank you friends uh, it's always very difficult to speak uh, after i've been told that i'm perhaps 100 years old with the list of experience that has been recounted <laughs> but uh, no uh, cargo as everybody knows is uh, my favorite subject it's something i got into 3 uh, years ago 3 and a half years ago and uh, the journey from then till now on air cargo has been uh, stupendous simply because we were able to find the synergies between the different supply chain stakeholders we were able to find value realization for everybody in the supply chain and we were able to work in unison towards better performance metric the results are for everybody to see and in terms of where specifically we went and addressed ourselves the first area was in policy and regulation space fortunately the national civil aviation policy of 2016 had provided a fairly important platform for us to be frog from and working with acfi at that time led by the president was tushar jani and now with uh, cyrus katgara um and their entire teams and the entire acfi and other freight uh, fraternity we worked to develop areas where specific attention was needed in the policy and regulatory space we worked with the international community uh, as well and lin hughes has been a particular compatriot uh, uh, well, partner in crime i would say uh, in this uh, endeavor and uh, we worked out uh, the national air cargo policy outline i mean it's a euphemism for calling it an outline because it has all the core elements of the national air cargo policy of 2019 that came out one of the unique aspects of that policy is that uh, it has embedded in it an implementation action plan 
and we have been working diligently on the action plans um, since then. Many successes, some which have been uh, deflected a bit because of the COVID pandemic, uh, and also actually prior to the COVID pandemic by the global economic slowdown. Um, when I say deflected, I don't mean that uh, they were uh, put to rest or we forgot about them. It's just that we found the need to recalibrate our thinking on some of the implementation plans that we had. Uh, and uh, it, it is that recalibration that uh, has been actually a very exciting journey, putting in place system which can deliver in, in uh, most extraordinary circumstances and under challenging situations. So all that uh, we have been doing. And more recently, you would have seen that uh, we have also looked at the open sky policy, again, um, with the intention of embedding India and Indian trade system deeper into the um, global transit, transshipment, uh, as well as uh, other supply chain. So we have been working on those uh, quite uh, judiciously for the last, uh, I would say, over a year, in particular after India found that uh, its carriers were gungo enough to bring in um, dedicated freighters into uh, the country on these terms. Um, we worked on infrastructure development, and I'm very happy to say that if we take on a net basis, uh, pan-India basis, the air cargo infrastructure is uh, nearly three times the um, actual volumes that we are seeing moving um, from India and uh, from and to India. And that gives us a lot of comfort that uh, there's not a lot of financial investment or time consuming works programs that are required to put in place uh, uh, to, to allow for the growth to continue for a cargo. That doesn't mean that there aren't areas, especially the regional areas in, and those in tier two, tier three towns where we are seeing very compelling growth, um, where infrastructure does need to be created. And uh, fortunately, uh, this, these tier two, tier three towns are all with the I class. And we have um, a very strong program which has been put in place by its dynamic CEO and other members of the I class. So we in the ministry do feel that uh, we will be able to address the physical infrastructure of Naya as well. Um, if we look at uh, India's passenger and cargo, we know that we are serving more than 343 routes, which cover more than 52 countries with 76 airlines and uh, from over 100 airports, which are providing cargo. Taken in a proper perspective, that in itself contains the seeds of India's leap forward uh, in cargo. We are obviously punching way below our weight where air cargo is concerned for historical reasons, but I think we are willing to, uh, we are ready to, to address uh, those negatives. Um, under COVID also, we saw a remarkable uh, resilience of the physical infrastructure. 
we saw a remarkable resilience of the IT platforms, which have really served us very well. And most importantly, we saw that uh, the airlines and airports continued to serve um, without a single day's break under very safe conditions. This is uh, a remarkable story. I can't show the graphs that uh, reveal in without the necessity of words how our journey has just been an uphill one in uh, in a cargo <coughs> under the worst conditions we started with 17 percent of the pre-covid level and in january we are now at 94 percent of the pre-covid uh, january 2020 level and uh, this is no mean achievement it was done under very challenging circumstances and i must state that our entire freight forwarding uh, system the agents themselves i don't think they slept uh, they were solutions they found uh, that problem resolution was uh, their forte and uh, they did it and uh, i can only compliment all of them from the part of government of india um where domestic cargo is concerned that's an even better story because propelled by um, agri perishable we are seeing that uh, the cargo handle is the uh, over 97 percent and uh, so it is basically the international trade where the suction out of the international belly capacity which is uh, a little bit of a drag still but we are working forward on that even under covid where people were talking about lack of financial wherewithal or a liquidity crisis uh, We've actually had new cargo terminals being built and put into operation during the pandemic situation uh, conditions. For instance, Surat, Indore, Bhopal, Jaipur. These are some of the success stories which have got operationalized. And please keep your ears open and your um, eyeballs on India because you're going to see much more of that uh, in the coming days and months. Um, I've spoken a little bit about Krishti uh, or Agri Perishable. Uh, India is, as you know, home to some of, uh, well, the second largest vegetable production, fruit and vegetable or horticulture production in the world and so on. I don't need to go into all the fisheries and other details as well. Uh, these numbers are available. But what is important is that we are now seeing the air freight industry put dedicated freighters to carry from the this cargo from uh, the production clusters to demand clusters both within India as well as outside of India. This is one of the new achievements uh, and one of the big success stories that we have. We've measured, in a very measured way, we have put in place a, a incentivization system for domestic movement, air cargo from the disadvantaged hilly areas of the Northeast as well as from the four Himalayan states and of uh, of uh, Uttarakhand, Madhya Pradesh, Jammu and Kashmir, and uh, Beladak. Now, the other big story that India, I think, has uh, to share with uh, our dear fraternity is on the vaccine movement. It has, you know, we we were asked within a period of uh, to move consignments domestically to 60 consignee points 
uh, starting from the third day. And uh, as you know, this is temperature sensitive cargo. And we could find uh, the complete, I, I mean, completely seamless movement of uh, the vaccine taking place with not a single mishap anywhere. Um, since 12th January, it has become a regular feature um, domestically to the 60 consigned point. I think this is uh, noteworthy also for the performance metrics. So we've had uh, the uploading taking place on an average of nine minutes. We've had the offloading and handover to the consignee uh, taking place uh, in two minutes to 18 minutes flat. So uh, this is, I think, a phenomenal uh, way in which the freight industry has supported the uh, suppliers of vaccine by ensuring that the air movement time is actually the least and more time is available for the last mile connectivity to the 29,000 um, dissemination point for the vaccine that we have. Um, <coughs> We're also seeing a uh, participation of uh, our defense sector in the air transportation of essential movement, whether it is from out of the country to the inward movement or for the vaccine in under vaccine maitri program which the government of india has initiated or even the commercial export of our suppliers um, this is again a novel way of adding capacity during uh, periods of constraint one of the very important things that i would like to mention at this stage is that most of us speak of developing into India into an air uh, transshipment uh, and transit hub. That is certainly the need of the hour for the supply industry, which is driven by integrators. But I would also like us as an entire community to harness the needs that arise from e-commerce, <coughs> which actually require point-to-point -point, uh, movement of air cargo. Um, and importantly, for there to be uh, a seamless uh, interoperability between these two systems of air freight movement that would take place. Um, what is important uh, is also that India is situationally, we've always heard of the um, India being a large manufacturing center, India uh, having a huge demand or a consumer base within itself, but something that our freight industry had not looked at while looking at the transformation of needed for the supply chains, was that two-thirds of the population of the world can actually be reached or connected from India within a five to five and a half hour radius. And that, if we look at it, is also the huge strength of our airline as well. Not that we, we don't have the capacity long haul, we do, but uh, most of our carriers today are able to meet this requirement quite readily. And uh, so it's important for all the countries to partner with us on this so that we can uh, realize this enormous potential for the healthy growth of global cargo um, and meeting all the destinations within uh, not just uh, EU, US, and others that have been, and the Middle East, which has been our focus, but also in the 
in Central Asia and in other uh, regions of the world. Um, on IT, I'm very happy to share that we are on a strong path of uh, going digital with faceless uh, process mechanism. We have been making domestic digital corridors and also international dedicated physical freight corridors as well as digital freight corridors. Um, this has been, I think, one of the um, uh, measures that India has taken a lead on in the world. And I'm sure it will develop further. I'm also very happy to report that India's aviation IT has found its space <coughs> and leadership in the world because it is India's aviation IT company which have been developing the air cargo community system in many parts of the world now. There is a huge amount of interest, not just for the, air car, uh, the airport community, but also inter-airport community. And let's hope we will truly become uh, an IT-driven mm -hmm. global platform. I cannot but share with you that the IT booking portal that had been brought out in India by the private sector way back in March 2018 still remain under you. And uh, that is something that continues to bother me as to what is it that is um, not allowing a fuller use of those uh, very valuable IT platforms? Because they enable multimodality, they enable first mile, last mile connectivity, they would enable advanced information to flow to, uh, from the consignor to the consignee quite seamlessly and all the regulatory agencies would be in a position to provide their decisions and declaration quite readily and in advance so that the entire air cargo system benefits. We have also seen um, expedited movement on the land and air uh, multimodal front. This is something again <coughs> that we had put in place um, some two and a half years ago, and it remains a very successful um, venture. We have a number of land custom stations bordering our neighboring country, and we have been now using those uh, land custom stations to harness the movement of cargo quite seamlessly in bonded uh, carriage without multiple intervention and with security and safety of carriage as well. I can only say that uh, where our vision lies is now um, to transform our fly from India logo and desire or vision to fly from and via India so that uh, the two serious movements or systems that would need to be put in place quite readily which is the transit and transshipment hub for integrate and also the uh, e-commerce related point to point uh, where, or warehouse to warehouse move of cargo with first mile and last mile connectivity um, on the road or through air provided for again in this. This is something that we will be working towards quite ready. I wish my friends from the ACFI and all the global community, cargo community that is present uh, here with us, all the very best. And we have exciting times, not least because there is uncertainty about uh, 
when the COVID contagion will be uh, tethered by us to a more manageable, uh, what can I say, impediment, but uh, also when we will be able to find the propulsions and the key enablers of growth being given their true space in a competitive market orient. So, uh, as all of you know, we have not been able to provide um, budgetary support for the aviation fraternity in India. And yet, as I hinted earlier, if you look at the charts and graphs of the air cargo movement or the performance of our airlines, our air force, our MRO of all other allied and sectors, there is a steady upward trend, which is most unlike many other countries, including those who are bigger uh, in terms of your world than us. So with these words, uh, I wish the ACFI and this event all success. Thank you. Yeah, no, thanks Vandana yeah. for that always enlightening speech. You know, we are just talking behind your back and saying how passionate you are for air cargo and we are so happy for your passion on air cargo because everybody is so passionate about passenger but air cargo took the back seat and for a change now air cargo is every time in a lot of news on air cargo and even I was surprised the airlines in the in-house magazines have started putting a few pages on air cargo which was never existing before. So, uh, viewers, just kindly be a little patient. We are waiting for the minister, Mr. Hardeep Singh to come in. In the meantime, Vandana, um, the uh, air cargo has taken such a big leap in terms of uh, uh, knowing globally. Suddenly, air cargo is all the buzzword. So, and I've seen that the ministry has really supported air cargo. They've they've just gone out of the way, not only because of vaccines. Of course, it started the it started vaccines, but then it's just blown off all over the place. They're allowing uh, f allowing free freighters, allowing everything. The permissions are much faster. So I want to thank you. And if you have any comment on that, let our viewers know about it also. We've got almost plus uh, almost a thousand viewers coming in. Right, Arvind, now what's the count, final count on viewers? 1100 to 1200 viewers now. So I think it's one of the largest conferences you are on. Okay, we'll have the event video being played just now till the minister gets in. Say one thing. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, Vandana, go ahead. Our airports, uh, whether the JV airports or uh, the I classes airports, they have been the fulcrum from where the air cargo could take place. I found that they were providing solutions as well, thinking out of the box and uh, reaching out to everybody. This, you know, I, a lot of the air cargo fraternity used to tell me that crisis brings out the best in the air cargo mm -hmm. industry. And that is really so. And airlines are also today realizing that a lot of their salaries uh, of the of their people is 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 coming simply because cargo is moving. So, um, honourable minister is here. So I will break off now. So that. Namaskar, Shri Ardeep Singh Ji. Thank you very much for taking this time off sort your busy schedule. You seem to be in the news every time. And I guess you are the busiest ministry so far. However, I am here to welcome you on behalf of ACFI. I welcome Shri Har Hardeep Singh Puri, Honorable Minister of State, Minister of Civil Aviation for gracing the occasion as Chief Guest for the annual event of ACFI. I also second time welcome Vandana for uh, a senior economic advisor. The, con the theme of the convention is changing consumption patterns, transforming supply chains. 
We are thankful to all our valuable speakers from various parts of the country and overseas for their participation. Their pre your presence has, sir, your presence has given us a boost to the SCIFI organizing team. We are really happy to have you with us. <coughs> uh, a quick, a quick snapshot. I'm going to give you a few figures. First, I'm going to tell you 35, then I'm going to give you 14, and I'm going to give you 1 to 8. You're going to guess what these figures are, but I'm going to tell you that. 35% of the value of air, of the value of cargo or value of shipments moves by air cargo. And that's how important air cargo is to the nation. India as a nation sees 35% of its cargo moving by air. The second figure I gave you was 14%, the cost of logistics. Now, the cost of logistics in India is around 14%. But you'll be surprised to know that air, the cost and the good news is air cargo is only between 1% to 8% on the CIF value. So, that's uh, air cargo is actually a cheaper mode of transport than the other, other modes of transport when it's compared to the CIF value. And, that, and that's what everybody looks at. You look at the CIF value and then say what my cost of logistics is. So, this is a surprising fact. Air cargo, mark, air cargo provides speed to market, zero inventory cost, zero warehousing cost, low financing cost, and zero loss of sales. Today, if you do not use air cargo, your products are going to be in warehouse and not on the shelves of the customer. A good example is, of course, our friends Apple, the very high end, and also we have the low end Zara, which both use air cargo in extensively, or probably almost exclusively. If these two high end and low end are urging success in the and the both are most successful companies. <coughs> going uh, going paperless again is my favorite subject, and COVID has fast tracked this process overnight. What we couldn't achieve in twenty years, we've achieved in a just a few months. The contactless and paperless, which is successful to some extent, anyway on the ground level, there are still mountains of paper which we are confident will go away in a short time as the markets have already changed. And the mindset of people have also changed. So, we are very hopeful that we are going to be paperless, which we tried 20 years, and now it's going to be fast-tracked overnight. Customs, custom brokers, I, I have this message to give the customs. This, uh, customs, Custom brokers, 99% of them are doing their job and coming out clean every time. There may be a fraction in the industry who are not as clean or maybe, you know, but that's with every industry. My plea to customs is look as your custom broker, as your partner. Times have changed. The future trend is collaboration, which is much more important than accusation. It's time to say thank you to Mocha, DCAS, customs, terminal operators, airline, custom brokers, and finally the freight forward who works timelessly or tirelessly to get tender cargo ready for carriage. And for and the most important, keeping the Indian skies the safest in the world. Thank you, the whole cargo industry, for saving the world during the COVID period. I once again heartily thank the Honorable Minister Shri Hardeep Singh Puri for gracing the occasion, Vandana, Mrs. Vandana Agarwal, and all the speakers, dignitaries, guests for their valuable presence and guidance. Lastly, I would like to end by thanking all the 1,100 viewers who are attending in large numbers to make this ACFI event a grand success. Jai Hind. Thank you. Arvind ji. Yash. Uh, Mr. Hardeep Singh Puri, I'd like you to say a few words of wisdom. You've been saying a lot of wisdom to everybody else. Let our whole viewership have your wisdom too. Uh, thank you. Am I audible? Very clear. Uh, uh, Sri Cyrus Kadgara, President of the Air Cargo Forum of India. Uh, my colleague uh, Vandana Agarwal, Senior Economic Advisor in the Ministry of Civil Aviation. Captains from the cargo industry, esteemed speakers, distinguished participants, ladies and gentlemen. I believe that the theme for today's discussion, changing consumption patterns, transforming supply chains, is both relevant and contextual.
if you were to make the statement that COVID-19 has had a disruptive effect, I believe that statement would qualify for the um, understatement of not the year, but the century. <laughs> All sectors of economic activity have been severely affected as a result of the pandemic. Some of the negative effect is still visible across the globe. And yet, there are some sectors, and I would like to include civil aviation in the Indian context, both in the context of domestic uh, civil aviation and particularly cargo, which I believe will come out of the pandemic with a greater degree of resilience and I believe bounce back to emerge stronger than they were prior to the pandemic. This might sound a little uh, uh, startling to those of my colleagues who, uh, if I may be allowed to say that, uh, get easily taken in by the somewhat pessimistic and negative discourse that characterizes our current existence. But I am trying to not only be positive, but I also want to point to a few positive features, and cargo certainly is one of them. But let me first say a few words about the lockdown as a result of the pandemic and the subsequent calibrated, deliberately thought through opening up of the Indian aviation sector. When the Prime Minister decided to effect a total, complete lockdown on the Indian economy, we seized normal civil aviation operations as we understood them, both domestic and international, with effect from 25th March. The quarter which followed April, May, June of 2020 witnessed a 23.9% contraction in the economy. But the subsequent opening up of the economy has now produced a degree of optimism and not only we, that is the economic survey of the Government of India, the Ministry of Finance, but even the International Monetary Fund is saying that the Indian economy is poised to register a growth of 11.5% of GDP in 21-22. But let me come back to the civil aviation sector. A total lockdown on 25th March did not mean that we closed shop. In fact, my colleagues, under the able supervision and uh, stewardship of my colleague Vandana and the others, they introduced a number of very innovative and highly successful programs. One of them was Lifeline Uran. Lifeline Uran, which the Ministry of Civil Aviation, led by the Secretary, oversaw, brought back 1,500 tons of medical supplies from outside India. It also succeeded in utilizing domestic resources to transport 942 tons or thereabouts within the country from larger metropolitan areas to small cities, those which had very limited connectivity, and we have proceeded thereafter to carry on. That 1,500 medical, uh, metric tons, which came, now grew to 1,900 metric tons. Lifeline Udan continued till we were able to now normalize civil aviation operation up to an extent. Let me give you an example. When we opened domestic civil aviation in May, towards the end of May, I think 25th May or thereabouts, after a period of total lockdown of domestic civil aviation, we had 30,000 flights on the first day. Today, I'm very happy to inform you 
that when I get the figures for the previous day, every morning, when I see a figure of 300,000 or 310,000, that's the normal. I'm hoping that within the next fortnight or so, and certainly by the end of March, we will be at pre-COVID levels or even higher. The opening was slow, calibrated. As I said, when we opened up on 25th May, we had 30 thousand passengers traveling because we had opened only 33% of the uh, domestic traffic. We raised that to 45%, then to 60, 70, and currently we are at 80%. Pre, prior to the lockdown and COVID, we were operating from a 107 Airports Authority of India airports. Today we are operating from 99. Our endeavor to return to normalcy has, I think, by and large, been able to overcome the roadblocks, some which were natural and only to be expected in a pandemic, but others, if I may say so, were man-made. They were created by some of us. Let me give you an example. We had to navigate a difficult terrain. Some of our own people involved in the industry decided to take us to court. So to say that these central seats should be left vacant. We instituted, established a committee with three eminent medical practitioners, the head of ICMR, the head of the All India Institute of Medical Sciences and the Another famous doctor, Dr. Naresh Trehan, they gave us a report. We were able to establish by and large that civil aviation is the safest mode of transportation. Safest, safer, safe, safer, safest are relative terms. None of us is in a position to guarantee 100% safety on anything. But you have to compare it to other modes of transport. What are the other modes of transport? Surface transport, railways, tra transportation by bus. We were able to establish by and large with the help of the other stakeholders that today we have a situation in which it is perfectly safe with some precautions, wearing masks, some use of PPEs, etc. So whilst we were getting our healthcare in sec uh, uh, health sector sorted out, domestic civil aviation was beginning, and I'm very happy to hear today, we utilized the time, the period between March of 2020 and the current date to revive and reclaim. So when the president uh, of the uh, Air Cargo Forum was telling us about the relative cost of air cargo operation vis-a-vis -vis others, well, that is something I've always believed in. And I want to take the opportunity of this platform. And I believe you have a large number of uh, viewers who are participating in this session to tell you not only will we reclaim what we had lost on civil aviation international as a result of some neglect, some not so benign actions on our front in the last many years, but particularly revival, reclaiming, and in cargo, we are determined to ensure that more and more people use air cargo, and that comes more and more to the Indian GDP. That is Indian carriers, Indian stakeholders. Therefore, this new spirit that your president was talking about, I warmly welcome that. We have been consistently engaging with the airlines, cargo carriers to include, increase their cargo capacity, to provide a low playing field to all our carriers. We initially limited the non-scheduled cargo operator carriers to only six metro airports, Delhi, Mumbai, Calcutta, Chennai, Bangalore, and Hyderabad. We have also encouraged our carriers to get more capacity, to move towards a more level playing field. 
We have rationalized operations of the scheduled services of foreign carriers. The cargo series are governed now by the bilateral air services agreement. In April 2020, air cargo handled at Indian airports was just 17% of the 2019 level. By June, that 17% had reached 60%. June 2020 has 60% of June 2019 figure. In September 2020, it was 82% of January 2021. And, and it was of the previous year. And by January, we had reached 94% of cargo handled during the car comparable period last year. We see today growing share of air cargo in the revenue of our airlines. As a result, even in these unprecedented times, multiple green sheet shoots are visible across the air cargo sector. For example, Srinagar Airport has witnessed 300% plus growth in air cargo as compared to pre-COVID levels. Surat Airport saw a growth of more than 200%. Amritsar Airport, an increase of close to 80%. And Varanasi Airport, a growth of 96% in air cargo boom. So whilst it is um, common, we all say that the COVID has had a devastating effect. No, not, none of us can deny that. But the real story is that we have utilized the disadvantage to which we were subjected to and yet got our act together. And these figures of 300% increase in Srinagar, 200% increase in Surat, 80% in Amritsar, and 96% of cargo increase in Varanasi, I think should be widely disseminated, both by all of you participating here, because that is an indicator that we can do things in difficult circumstances. And of course, I can tell you our vaccine uh, program is something which the world is applauding. I mean, we had these critics who said, you know, we haven't done this, we closed down too effectively, we opened up too soon. You know, if you want to be a prophet of gloom or doom, you can make any statement. But there is nothing like being able to say the facts speak for themselves. I don't have the figure with me, but I'm a member of the group of ministers which deals with the COVID vaccine. But my assessment is that something like 1.20 crore people have already been vaccinated in India. Our idea was that in a few months' time, I've just been told that the figure uh, is the idea is that by June or July, I don't know what the figure was, we were hoping to vaccinate 30 crore people. So within a month, we have done 1.20 crores. But more important, we are now opening up from the 1st of March for the next phase. That is, that is those with comorbidities uh, above the age of 45 and senior citizens who above the age of 60. They will freely be able to access the vaccine. At the government centers, it will be supplied free in other places at a nominal cost. Now, what, where does that leave us now on what we are discussing today? My assessment is Civil aviation will receive a big boost in overall terms, in terms of passenger traffic. The availability of the vaccine, both in India and we are an example for the world, we are one of the five countries in the world which is manufacturing the vaccine. And I believe we have probably one of the most well-structured programs providing for production, transportation, and last mile connectivity on the vaccine. I monitored one of the uh, uh, one of these days a few days ago. It took us between two to eight minutes to load the vaccine onto an aircraft, and between six to twenty minutes to take it off. I mean, you can't do better than this, and this would not be possible. And I don't think the credit to this belongs just to civil aviation and the airport. It belongs to all the stakeholders. A truck comes up right up to the aircraft, effortlessly the cargo goes into the hold, or and plane takes off within minutes, lands at its destination, and the whole chain works. That is what I call the beauty of being able to rise to a challenge. In the civil aviation sector overall, 
I'm used to saying, so I apologize to those who heard it before. Today, airport development, airport privatization is the big message. In 2006, the then government privatized the Delhi and Mumbai airports. And those are there for all of you to see. When I joined the Indian Foreign Service and I was going on my first posting to Japan in the year 1975, or I think January 76, the traffic in Delhi airport was, then it was called Palam International Airport, 1 million passengers a year. Today, Delhi airport does 70 million passengers. And the fourth runway, which is coming up and is likely to be available before too long, we will be doing close to 100 million. With Jaiwar airport coming up between Delhi and Jaiwar, we'll do 140 million. Mumbai does 55 million. Another airport coming up in Navi Mumbai will go up to 70, 80 million. But cargo today is the real story because civil aviation, privatization of airports, then the two airports privatized in 2006 generated money towards the end, till the end of December 2020, up to 29,000 crores. That is the money which was, which made it possible for us to build the other airports. We have come currently 100 airports under construction. These 100 airports include many greenfield airports. Before I became civil aviation minister, a decision had been taken in November 2018 to privatize six airports. I'm very happy to inform you, work is under progress on that, and we are now looking at another six plus more. Meanwhile, traffic, we have a penetration of only 7%, which means out of every 100 Indians, only 7 fly. If we were registering rates of growth of up to double digit, 17% uh, recently. May I just say that I personally welcome the focus on cargo. My colleagues, the secretary, all senior officials, part of the management of the ministry, we are going ahead to ensure that cargo operators, all the other stakeholders receive the encouragement that is their due and that cargo operations become a major revenue source, not only for our airline, but for all those operating. Therefore, I welcome the convening of a platform like this. And thank you very much for inviting me. And I wish you very successful deliberation. Thank you very much. Jai. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Minister Hardeep Singh Puri. Your words have come uh, as real source of inspiration and appreciation to the entire stakeholding community of Air Cargo. Uh, definitely, all stakeholders will continue to participate in the movement of vaccine. It was really heartening to see how the government of India has stood up and, and not just contributed to the vaccination of the Indian people, but, but have carried on the culture that India has of giving to other parts of the world. It's really heartening to see. And what you mentioned about the importance of cargo in aviation, uh, it's it's very, very heartening for us to to see and, and hear the positive views that you have and the government of India has for the aviation industry for the years ahead. Uh, very true, the potential that you mentioned about smaller cities of India with the advent of air, air cargo and passenger capacities to them. Uh, you mentioned about cities like Srinagar getting a 300% increase and cities like Surat with 200% and a 96% increase in Varanasi. These are only numbers that are a start. And I'm sure, you know, the Indian entrepreneurs which are spread in every small little village of India will, will really find this music to the ears that, you know, you are planning to go and take the aviation to everybody's everybody's cities and smaller cities as well yes with only seven percent currently flying as more and more capacity comes in there would be more indians who will take to the skies and also give boost to the indian economy thank you very much sir uh, i would really want to appreciate and thank you for spending your valuable time and enlightening us and also uh, i've been told we have more than 4000 attendees from around the world who are live on our session today 
and uh, and our distinguished panel which goes in from hong kong singapore right up to uk we've had a series of panelists today and we have another session coming up they would they would have really 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 appreciated what all you've said about the aviation certainly india has just touched upon uh, the cusp of what what we can do and i'm sure the years and and the century ahead will belong to india thank you so very much madam vandana uh, the i mean as much as i can say i have been part of various of your discussions and you know you have been working relentlessly like the uh, for 20 20 hours a day uh, thank you very much for all your contribution especially to the cargo sector uh, we really appreciate the role that you have played in opening up uh, various difficult areas for us when the when the going was tough in the in the pandemic period uh, we promise you from the air cargo industry air cargo forum india will continue to play a pivotal role and and will collaborate with the with the indian government to do whatever best we can i really appreciate and thank you once again for your valuable time thank you ma'am thank you sir and uh, wish you all the very best have a great evening yeah could we could we probably play the promotional videos please